Some people may think, mm, sounds like a beautiful place. He said it, but do I really want to go through all that? Do I really? No, there's other places that I can visit. Just like Gump on YouTube, figure you bring some new food. Hello people and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time on the channel, a special welcome to you. I ask that you check out the rest of my videos. If you like what you see, give them a thumbs up, leave a comment, but more than anything, I'm asking that you subscribe to the channel. Recently, I visited the country of Albania. And for most of you guys who do not know where Albania is, it is a country here in Europe. Albania is a very beautiful country and as much as this vlog is not about the beauty of Albania, but some negative experiences that I, that I experienced in Albania, I could not cover this video without addressing the beauty that Albania possess. And the reason why Albania is so beautiful, I'm not just saying beautiful, I'm talking about overwhelmingly beautiful people. It is a beautiful country. And I'm gonna tell you why, my suspicion as to why Albania is so beautiful. For all you guys who do not know, Albania had suffered decades of communist ruling. Uh, communist ruling might have had a bad impact on the people, but it had a positive impact on the geographic, the land itself of Albania. And what I mean by that is there is some of the most untouched nature in Albania. Blue water, clear water, green water, and forestry is just everywhere. Albania has been freed from communist ruling within the last 30 years. Communism ended in 1992 in Albania, so it's fairly a new country. And because of that, it still contains, still as some of God's given beauty, untouched nature, some of the best that I've personally ever seen. So again, I cannot say enough about how beautiful the country of Albania is itself. But for most of you guys who wants to see the beauty and see what I truly got up to while I was in Albania, you gotta check out my shared channel with my wife, Ian and Tina, and you will see the highlights and you will see several vlogs of what we got up to while we were in Albania. So let's get to the point of this vlog, the corruption, the crookedness, and the thieves that are at Tirana's International Airport, which in a great contrast is called Mother Teresa's Airport. Mother Teresa is known to be one of the most kind, gentle, and caring human being that ever walked the earth. So it is an insult to the legacy of Mother Teresa for any crookedness to be at an airport that's named off her. Anyway, without any further ado, people, let me get right into the video. So recently, I went to Albania, flying out of Zurich, Switzerland via Swiss Air, an airline that I truly trust and I've used several times to fly to different places around the world. So when I booked Swiss Air to go to Albania, I was quite comfortable and everything that followed from Swiss Air to me was of no surprise. I, when I, what I mean is like Swiss Air reminded me as the days would coming up as to what I need to have in order to enter Albania. Swiss Air reminded me that I will be needing my passport, all other relevant documents, including a PCR COVID test, which I did and have in a timely manner. So I flew into Tirana International Airport and my passport was asked to be looked at and that was pretty much it. I was welcome into the country and no one asked me about the PCR test. So what I got from that was that the Albanians failed to update their website on travel information. So the Swiss just went off what information they saw in the Albanian travel website. Anyway, got into Albania, and like I said, it was a ball of fun. You know, I, I had a great time in Albania. As expected, as a tourist, and I was an obvious tourist in Albania, because um, let's just say, between my wife and myself, I did not see another black person in Tirana. 
where I spent my first three days. My fourth day was spent in duress where I actually saw another black person. <laughs> so yeah, what I'm trying to say here is there's not a lot of black people in Albania. So when you see someone like me in Albania, it pretty much reads tourist. And as expected, from the locals, if the country's poor, I expect it to be overcharged here and there, you know. So when I went to one of the local market to buy a suit, um, I was obviously overcharged. Did I truly really need a suit? No. I have too many suits to buy a suit, so I didn't really need a suit. But I'm here to have a good time and I'm here to spend my money and let Albanians know that if you guys entertain and welcome tourists, the economy could get better. You know, tourism could be a thing for you because tourism is not the biggest thing for Albania at the moment. Not so sure how they make their money, but tourism is still on the low side of the scale at the moment. So when I was overcharged for a suit and I was overcharged for uh, a taxi ride, those a little irritation but no great surprise you understand because i'm from jamaica and jamaica is a tourism mecca and i understand that if you go to one of the craft markets in jamaica the prices that a local jamaican would get something for versus a white person who was obviously a tourist it's gonna be different they're gonna beat you with the price but let me say in defense of my Jamaican people, they won't kill you with the price, you know, because we still care more about our tourism than we care about ourselves as Jamaicans. So going to Albania, a poor country where the government care very little about its citizens and most people are unemployed, I went with a certain mindset to expect a little overpricing and to give generous tips with whatever service I received. So while staying at hotels and the restaurants that I stayed at, that I used, I tipped everybody enormous. I tipped people in ways they've never been tipped before. I mean, I'm going to Albania. It's my first time and I wanted to experience the best of what Albania had to offer. And trust me, people, the best that Albania had to offer it was up to my standard. It was up to my standard. Kind of surprised me, I'm not gonna lie, but five star in Albania meant five star. I stayed at uh, Checo Imperial uh, Hotel, which was just majestic people. If they offered six Michelin star, I would have given it. It could not get any more royal. It could not get any more grand. And then my wife and I, we stayed in one of the best suites that they had to offer. It was called Luigi the 14th or something like that. And our friend that was there with us, because we were balling out, I just thought, let's spoil her, let her taste the best that our country had to offer. So we got her a suite just as ours. It was um, just as grand, just as fabulous as ours. And we had a great time. After we left Toronto, we went to Duras. People. Duris is beautiful. I have to give Duris, and an Albanian says Duris is not the most beautiful part of Albania, but I'm telling you, Duris is beautiful. And the hotel that we stayed at, Pascucci Villa, Villa Pascucci. Oh yeah, it is to die for. Again, if six stars were being given out, this is what I would give Villa Pescucci. It was just grand beyond the definition of grand. They had some ceilings in Villa Pescucci in, in each suite and bedrooms that makes you feel like you were just in some overvalued cathedral in Rome somewhere. It was a beautiful experience and I could go on and on. After I left Villa Pescucci, I went to stay at uh, Ardenicia or which they pronounce Ardenicia, which is a brand new hotel. It used to be just a restaurant. The manager says they just became a hotel three months ago and because they just became a hotel three months ago, everything was brand new and hospitality was on point and the view was to die for people. The view at Ardenicia was to die for. Shout out 
to Sony, the manager, who was just helpful and grateful, you know. Um, I got to the hotel and Sony had to rectify uh, a little conflict that I was having. I was annoyed because I was in Albania for four days and this was my first conflict, first negative experience with a taxi driver. So while I was leaving Villa Pescucci, I asked the taxi driver how much to take me to Ardencia, how much to take me to an area called Lushne. He says 30 euros. And then when I showed him the address, he says, well, this is not quite Lushne, so you got to give me 40 euros. So I says, okay, no problem. We shook in it, we got in the car, we headed off to Ardencia because I don't know exactly where it is. When we got there, the taxi driver, he looked at the standard of hotel that I was leaving from to the standard of hotel I was arriving at, and that was enough for him to say, well, now it's going to be 60 euros. I was pissed. Not the money, the principle. I'm a man of words. If your word is not held, then it's pointless for you speaking. Contracts, verbal or written, just becomes void. It becomes mute. Um, if you give me your word, your word is your word. And foolishly, he wants to charge me 60, which I intended to give him because like I said earlier, I was here to tip any form of service that I attained. So, you know, that, that was my first of the bad experience in Albania. But like I say, he's a taxi driver. So I was not quite surprised, but shout out to Sony who came and rectified that for me. And that was put to the side and I quickly got on with my experience in Albania. I met some great people. I met some, I met one guy who ran a restaurant. So we went to the restaurant. My wife and I went to the restaurant with a party of four other people. So it was six of us. And um, this guy let me know, I will put the restaurant's name here. This guy let me know that as a tourist, your wife and yourself being tourists and first time in the country, you will eat here for free. I mean, I've experienced some warm hospitality in my life. I've just never experienced every, anything like that before. So shout out to that restaurant. I big it up right here because the food is great and the food was a lot. They keep bringing more and more and more and more food that at one point we just had to say no more fish and no more shrimp, please. <laughs> so that was great. So you guys must be wondering, well, where's the bad experience? Okay, let's get to the bad experience because this happened as I was leaving Tirana as I was leaving Albania via Tirana International Airport. Again, I expect overpricing, I expect a little ripoff here and there, but I expect it from the locals. It's something that would happen in my country. The locals have to look out for themselves because if the government is not looking out for them, they look out for themselves. But where I'm not expected to be ripped off or robbed is at the airport. And that's exactly what happened. I left Switzerland with a suitcase. I have a scale that I weigh my suitcase before I leave. Swiss Air is 23 kilograms is the maximum weight that you can take per person. And I weighed my case. I was just shy on the 23 kilograms before leaving. So was my wife. I was taking some stuff in my suitcase for my friend and her family. And so was my wife. So when we got to Albania, our weight just got decreased because we had to unload this stuff that we brought for the people. So now we have less weight. I bought a suit, just a suit. I bought, <laughs> you know, I love my pants. So I bought an Albanian pen and I bought an Albanian knife. Just souvenir, you know, tourist stuff. You're just buying stuff that you don't really need. And we also bought a little dome thing that represents the bunk cart. I got to the airport and we were told that the case, my case, was seven kilo 
over the required limit. Logically, I thought that does not make any sense because I have removed more than 10 kilos that I came here with. Anyway, because the night before, my wife and I and our friends, as you can see, we had a ball at Checo Rooftop Bar. We only had about three hours sleep before it was time to go to the airport. So I wasn't really in the mood to argue with anyone about some overweight baggage. So I was like, how much is it gonna cost? So he says 60 euros. So I'm like, show me where to pay it and let's get this plane moving. Let's get, let's get out of here. So I pay that and then we pass the checkpoint and everything and now we're sitting at the boarding gate just waiting for the airplane to come. The very last minute, the same guy who charged me 60 euros earlier, he appeared at the gate again and he's telling me and everybody that we need mask to get on board the plane. I don't know why the 60 euros didn't bother me as much as this requirement did, but it bothered me. And I asked him, where does it says we need masks to get on the plane? The police officer was standing right there. And I said, I would like to see the regulation that requires us to have masks to get on the plane because I came here without mask. And Switzerland and Swiss Air doesn't require any mask. The police immediately exited the, the area and it was left to me and the guy who I was frustrating by asking. Now they're saying if you don't have a mask at hand, you have to buy a mask, something that you can get online for like 10 cents, 20 cents. They want you to pay five euros for it. And I bought two for 10 euros. So they robbed me at the airport a total of 70 euros. It's not the money because I went there to spend money. I mean, the night before I tipped a waitress 5,000 lek. And I tipped two previous waitress 2,000 lakhs. So that equivalent to about 70 euros that I gave away in tips the night before. So it's, it wasn't the money that was bothering me. It was feeling robbed and at the level that I was feeling robbed. Like I say, if it was a vendor, a taxi driver, someone in a shop, it wouldn't bother me, but I'm at the airport. I'm at the place where it represents the tourism of Albania. I'm at the place where it reflects on the government of Albania. If I'm gonna be cheated and robbed at the airport, I can expect to be cheated and robbed anywhere else. For me, this was distasteful and this was bad for the Albanian people. Albania, like I said, is a beautiful country, but if people exiting Albania continues or experience these things, they're gonna go home and they're gonna do what I'm doing right now. They're gonna talk about their experience and it may create a bad effect. Some people may think, mm, sounds like a beautiful place. He said it. But do I really want to go through all that? Do I really? No, there's other places that I can visit. And right there, Albania, what I say, it is foolish to steal a bottle of milk when you could have a herd of cows. So for my Albanian people, I don't know. I don't know uh, what can be done. I met one guy in Albania, the guy who actually sold me the suit and he was like, how are you liking Albania? I said, I'm loving it. I said, this country has the potential to become a tourism mecca in the next five years. People just need to know more about it. He's Albanian and he turned to me and he says, that's nice to hear. However, I don't think so. Five years, 10 years, nah. He said, it's not the country. He said, it's the people. And I couldn't agree with him more. It's the people who makes a country. I'm from Jamaica, a beautiful country. But I have to say, Albania, because it's untouched, it's more beautiful than Jamaica. I have to say that. Jamaicans, we have an unsavory reputation when it comes to following the rules or being fair. I ask most people if, uh, who have met Jamaicans, what do you think of Jamaicans? They'll say, oh, Jamaicans are nice people. 
Jamaicans are warm, they're friendly, they're relaxed, and all that is true. But we also have an unsavory reputation. And what we need to do, and what we have been doing as Jamaicans, we've been, we've been working on that. So you'll find out that that unsavory reputation that Jamaicans used to have in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, it decreased by the decades. So we're known, we're known more for good than bad. So we've worked well on our image as Jamaicans. Albanians are the same. In Europe, I don't know about the rest of the world, in Europe, they don't have the best reputation. They're not the most trusted people. I don't know why, but what I've heard and what I've seen, I live in Switzerland and I've seen where Albanians are prejudiced against. I've seen where they're scorned. I've seen where they're not trusted. And Albanians just need to work on that because it is bad that when people suspect you of being a criminal or anything unsavory and you prove to be so, that's just, that's just bad. And even worse, when we go to your country and we experience the same at the level of the airport, being robbed at the airport, that's just unreasonable. That's just unbelievable. Most people just can't fathom that because if you go to Jamaica, like I say, uh, a, uh, a driver, a taxi driver may charge you up. A vendor may charge you up. Immigration officer or people at the ticket and counter. I've never experienced it. Don't, never heard much people complain about it or anybody complain about it for that matter. I think Jamaicans care more about their tourism than themselves when it comes to things like that. And that's an attitude that Albania and Albanians can adapt because I'm telling you, it's a beautiful place. I had a ball. Loved it. You know? And my wife and I, we went there with a budget. And we enjoyed the best of Albania below our budget. So we, 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 were, we were in a position where we could afford to tip people. And let people feel appreciated that we are there and we appreciate their service. And, you know, shout out to all the Albanians who apologized to my wife and I for any hiccups that we might have encountered through other Albanians. But it was a small, small hiccup compared to a vast experience of fun and beauty and sun. It was just great. It was just, it was just, we loved it. We love Albania. Uh, yeah, so... I don't know, I'm going to leave this with my subscribers and they can decide if they want to go to Albania or not. It's a beautiful place, it's just untouched, but I don't know for how long, you know, because it's a beautiful place and I can't stop emphasizing on the beauty of Albania. Anyway people, that's pretty much it, I just wanted to come on this channel, ramble on with my experience, get that little negativity out of my chest that I experienced at the airport because I was pissed. Because you know when you know you're being conned? That, you know, just ask me for the money and I'll give it to you. But don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. You know, don't do that because it was just wrong on every level. But anyway, people, Albania was great. And if you guys want to see what I got up to, don't forget. Check out Ian and Tina's channel. Don't forget to subscribe over there as well.